So what happens to materials when you stress and strain them? Um, how do they go about breaking and how do they change their shape? Uh, you know, what actually happens? So in the case of tension, again, when we're pulling along the major axis on the ends, um, what's happening is the reason why um, this thing has an energy capacity is you can imagine that these individual molecules or whatever happens to be inside this material, and we'll be studying how materials are held together, which internal forces hold them together. But you can sort of imagine that if you pull this material apart, it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law of forcing things. Is it's going to, if you push it, it'll push back. If you pull it, it'll pull back. So in this case, these are pulls, and uh, this material is going to pull back. So, the, so as you pull the top, the top will pull back. As you pull the bottom, the bottom will pull back. But this item is not alive. It's not, it's not a mammal with arms. So what happens is the reactionary force is not to pull down or to pull up, it's to pull in. So what happens is the internal forces, the springs that sort of hold this material together in the first place, um, the top is going to pull it back towards the center. Eventually it will lose the, 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 the race, if you will, and, get, and, and it will stretching will occur. It, you'll see some deformation, you'll see some strain. Um, the bottom will pull up, but because we're pulling in, the sides pull in as well. So uh, back to this idea of me pulling the gum out of my mouth or pulling Play-Doh or pulling anything. Uh, when you pull something and it happens to stretch, um, the material that appears to get longer has to come from somewhere. And what it, uh, where it comes from, if it happens to flow, is uh, from the middle. What you're doing is you're sort of pulling these things out. And what's happening is the forces that um, arise in the middle have nothing counteracting them. And so this material literally gets skinny in the middle. So in this case, if you can imagine this being a piece of taffy, or you can imagine this being a, a piece, of, um, piece of gum, um, as you pull the ends, the thing gets long, longer, and then it gets skinny in the middle. And this particular um, um, process inside material science is called necking down. Um, if you were to draw a cartoon of a person with, sorry about that, if you were to um, a cartoon of a person with their head on top and their shoulders on the bottom, uh, the way you draw a person um, is that their neck sort of goes in the middle like this. That's why that's where they get the term necking down. So when you apply a tension force um, on uh, on a material and it happens to get skinny in the middle, uh, skinny in the middle is lovely lovely to say, but um, the engineers are going to call it um, necking down. The opposite, of course, um, we're going to go ahead and apply a force along the major axis, along the top and the bottom. Again, the same argument holds. Newton's third law of motion or third law of forces suggests that when you push down, the material will try to push back. When you push up, the material will try to push back or push down. So the only thing the material can do is to push out. So as you push out along the top and you push out along the bottom, you're also pushing out along the sides. So if you go ahead and take this material and squish it, again, sort of like a, a juicy piece of gum or a starburst or a marshmallow, um, as you squish the top and the bottom, the sides start to bulge out because the material is pushing back. Uh, it's, it's, it's losing the battle along the top and the bottom. The reason why it's losing the battle is because it's actually moving and getting squished. But then the sides are bulging out the sides. So this is sort of like a like a marshmallow vision, a version of what happens to materials when they get compressed. And it doesn't have to be a marshmallow. All materials do this. Glass does this. Bricks do this. Metals do this. They just don't often do it in large enough so that we can see it on a human scale. Mar very soft marshmallows and bouncy tennis balls um, do this so we can see it as humans. Um, when you shear or cut things off axis, what happens is we produce something called dislocation. Um, the little pictures behind my face here. Let me make my face go away. Um, dislocation is the term. So we talked about necking down. We talked about bulging. And now we're talking about um, dislocation. Dislocation is what's happening is the material on this side. Let me look at the right place. The material on this side is um, moving up. The material on this side is moving down. And what you're doing is you're moving the material past each other. Um, the right side moves up. 
the left side moves down and eventually what you do is you tear or you cut uh, the big term being you shear the material this is what happens to your hair uh, when you cut your hair with a pair of shears um, the hair follicle was this lovely long strand of beautiful hair you come along with a very short sharp force down a very sharp force up and it happens to, to cut it or tear it in the middle that's how you go ahead and cut things here's torsion here's a twist um, we're going to go ahead and twist it one direction from this end a different direction from the other side and what happens is these things um, these materials twist past each other and in this case you get what's called torsional shear um, some of it goes one direction some of it goes the other way and what you do is you just uh, twist the top off of the bottom here's an example of a sheared bolt uh, where someone has this bolt perhaps was stuck in the socket that it was threaded into and then um, someone came along with a with an allen wrench it appears and twisted it off and then sheared the bolt um, to make sure that bolts do not get sheared off very often uh, typically mechanics will use what's known as a torque wrench uh, which provides a certain amount of torque under torsion and what it allows you to do is it allows you to measure how much this force is how many newtons is it uh, and then it's here on this dial so what happens is if you're if you're told at uh, the mechanic shop to put this material this bolt back in at a certain um, torsion and what they'll do is they'll say please dial this in or at least set this and then you literally just move this wrench until it beeps or tells you that yep that's tight enough you don't want to shear this thing off so we'll be taking a look at that later on uh, in the individual materials and then here's flexure. Again, this is the iPhone test. This is the flexure we saw with the airplane, with the um, the Boeing 777 wing. Um, we're going to have two forces on the bottom, one force on the top. They're off axis. And what happens is under tension, is um, one side, the top side, as it bends, actually is under compression. It actually gets gets smaller. If you've ever run a race or a relay race on a track, the person who's on the inside lane actually has a shorter distance to run. The person who on the outside lane actually has a further or a longer distance to run. So that's why on a track they either stagger the starting and finish lines to compensate for who's running the shorter or longer track or they happen actually have the, the athletes um, sort of cross over uh, in the middle to make sure that it's, it's a fair race. So what happens is right now before this material is under flexure the top surface is a certain length the bottom surface is the same length but under flexure the top surface actually gets shorter it's under compression and the bottom surface actually gets longer it's under tension so we use flexure to provide both compression and tension at the same time and what happens is as this thing is getting pinched at the top and pulled away at the bottom it seems to, it, it, it tends to tear or, or crack um, the, the term I'm using here is a fissure uh, fission means to take apart um, this fissure creates and then what this thing does is it tears in the middle so you can imagine doing something with something very very soft I don't know why I'm always based on food but if you happen to have a, a block of cheese and you would have bend the cheese with your thumbs the next time you have a block of cheese and you're tearing it apart you'll notice that the the side that's on the tension side the outside side will crack open and then the fissure or the break will go ahead and and, and work its way towards the inner side that's how you how you break something or if you happen to break a pencil it'll break on the outside first and then bring things back in